Here in Paris right now, protests are taking place, a march against the far-right National Rally Party, an alliance of feminist groups, thousands of people involved, going from the iconic Place de Republique here in the capital, walking four kilometres across the city to the Place de la Nation. Here are some of the images. There are similar demonstrations right now too in Toulouse, in Bordeaux, dozens of other towns and cities against the far right. Organisers saying that women's rights are being undermined if the party wins the upcoming elections. The first round, remember, in just a week's time. Let's hear from some of those at the demonstration. As soon as this protest to defend women against the far right was organised, I wanted to assert our values that cannot be defended by a party like the National Rally. A party that opposes equal pay between men and women. A party that represents everything but women's rights. So we need to make our voices heard, defend our cause and heritage. We can't let that go. I think that's what makes them dangerous, the fact that they put on a feminist facade because some people will believe it, but their actions don't match up. Because, yes, some members of the National Rally voted to enshrine abortion in the Constitution, but many did not. What scares me is the prospect of violence and the hatred towards women becoming normal. If the National Rally comes to power, everything they've always preached could become normal. And I'm scared that we'll no longer act against domestic violence and it could become normalized. France 24's Vedika Bahel is in the midst of the demonstration and said this a moment ago from here in Paris. Today's demonstration has very much been a show of unity in fighting for women's rights and freedoms. Uh, and what has been seen in abundance is a lot of variety and diversity in the types of demographics who have turned out uh, to protest for women. It's not just women's groups and feminist groups. In fact, uh, it was really diverse. There was climate associations, religious groups, uh, political groups, as well as youth and the elderly and LGBTQ organizations as well. So it was a real melting pot of solidarity here today. There's also a great ratio uh, of men demonstrating as well. One man that I spoke to said that he was here to raise his voice for his daughters and his sisters and the women in his life. He said he didn't believe Jordan Bardella's statements about championing women's rights and that he feels that women and minorities would be at risk under a far-right government. Uh, in terms of women, uh, all the women I've spoken to today have raised serious concerns about reproductive rights, uh, their rights in the workplace, funding for family planning that allows women to uh, defend the rights to their own bodies. So those are the issues on the table that they are concerned with. And one uh, beautiful thing that has been seen here today uh, is reclaiming the use of the whistle. Uh, feminist groups, when announcing this march, said that they would be uh, blowing the whistle, raising the alarm on the dangers that they feel uh, a far-right government could bring. And that's really been present uh, in this demonstration today. Uh, before and during the, present, the, the demonstration, women, uh, hundreds of women, have blown whistles throughout uh, in their protest uh, against the extreme right. Better cup of health in the midst of the demonstration. It's worth saying earlier this week, the National Rally leader, Jordan Bardella, said he was urging women to vote for the party. He claimed there were many misconceptions about their policies, including over abortion rights. This is what he said. I want to address all the women of France today. The freedom between women and men, the freedom to dress as we wish, the fundamental right to control our own bodies are non-negotiable principles. Cross to Bologna in Italy and bring in Alice Apostoli, the co-founder and co-director of Gender in Geopolitics Institute, a feminist foreign policy expert. Great to have you on the programme. Great to talk to you, Alice. Let's start off with the march taking place today and what you make of what's going on here in France right now. Uh, so the feminist civil society has been very active uh, against far-right parties during the European elections campaign and now during the national legislative campaign. So there is a strong narrative that the re rational, national rally um, is not a defender of women's rights, uh, which, is, which was translated by the fact that uh, the president of the party felt compelled um, to post uh, this video that is trying to appease women's concerns for their rights. Uh, what strikes me and a lot of feminist uh, activists and, and um, organizations in France uh, 
um, is that he stated that the party would be an unwavering defender for women's rights, which is not the case, uh, but also stated some freedoms that the party itself doesn't freely um, defend. For example, uh, the freedom to uh, wear whatever we wish. Uh, it was um, not very warmly welcomed uh, by uh, feminist uh, activists since um, members of um, um, his party has already intervened uh, against uh, wearing a hijab, for example, or against uh, uh, students to wear long dresses, which could be uh, uh, possibly an abaya. So we can see that this fight for women's freedom is not only a facade, but only really targets white women. So when you talk about, well, first of all, we heard from Jordan Bardella talking about the issues about enshrining the rights to abortion for women to choose, that that wouldn't be, be touched by the National Rally. You talk about the r right to wear what you want, whether that's religious attire or not, and that being potentially infringed upon. Again, that's something that the National Rally have disputed this week, but it's clearly not be believed by many women who are marching today. Tell me some other areas where you think there are key threats, impingements on rights. Um, while I believe there is a concrete threat to abortion rights uh, in France, if there is more power to far-right parties, um, what would be the most immediate threat in terms of gender equality um, would be the many attacks that the transgender community in France has been um, confronted with uh, the past few weeks uh, after a proposed bill to facilitate the change of gender uh, in the civil status. It was responded by uh, right and far-right Right parties uh, that proposed a counter bill that would, on the contrary, restrain health care and uh, treatment to minors that are transgender. Um, and a lot of uh, hate speech and discourses um, in, uh, in the media on a daily basis. So, um, and also what uh, would be, so that would be for the, against uh, the transgender community, but also when it comes to intersex people, uh, there is a clear neglect. Uh, um, that is currently happening in France. Um, a few days ago, an ex-official of the party uh, stated that he can't wait to be in three weeks from now, so after the, the, the ballot, uh, so he can physically attack gay men. Uh, so there is this strong LGBT uh, iphobic discourses and values in, in, that is uh, inheritance in this party. I, I think that would be the most immediate threat um, uh, against gender equality um, and, of course, that would be uh, coupled with a clear neglect uh, of victims of gender-based violence, um, maybe uh, um, attempted uh, attacks on uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights. Um, this is what we have seen in our uh, neighboring countries in Europe, uh, in Poland or in Hungary. And uh, this is why there is so much um, uh, mobilize, mobilization uh, amongst women and, um, um, and feminist organization in Paris, uh, because we know what could be ahead of us and we want to avoid it. The same way we constitutionalized um, abortion in France, it was to avoid uh, having a backlash and um, uh, our own overturning of Roe vs Wade. I want to raise something to you, Alice. Is it really eye-catching aspect of some of the polling this week? Polling by Opinion Way, which is carried out for several French newspapers. Bear in mind that we have the National Rally leading overall in the polls, showing so far around 34%, 29% for the left-wing alliance so far. Of those voters, back in 2019, 21 per cent of women voted for national rally. If we fast forward to the, this week's polls, we're looking at 33 per cent of women voting for Le Pen's far right party. What do you make of that? Um, it's, I think it's important to highlight that the national rally only evokes gender equality through the prism of immigration. During the European election campaigns, uh, the far right only ever talked about gender-based violence uh, while repeating that it was immigrants uh, that would represent 77% of rape cases in France, which is a blatant lie. Um, and that leaves behind the vast majority of victims that have been raped or assaulted uh, by someone they know. That, that is nine out of 10 cases. Um, so this 
neglect to care for victims of uh, GB, GBV and worse, uh, being in opposition to funds, programs and feminist discourses that could actually help prevent and punish those crimes um, uh, made, it, made it that uh, that video that, uh, that we reviewed um, uh, was a necessary move to uh, appease the concerns mainly of white women that wish for gender equality, but not for every woman, and that deem that the system is not the problem, the men they know is not the problem, um, the, the um, uh, political leaders are not the problem, the immigrants are, uh, and there is this uh, confirmation bias that uh, when it comes to uh, street harassment, when it comes to uh, um, uh, violence, it, I, I mean, immigrants and Islam are deemed the uh, main causes of violence against women. And this is a false narrative that is quite effective uh, amongst, amongst women that vote for uh, the national rally. They are not defending women's rights, they are instrumentalizing its struggle to carry on anti-immigration agenda. So to, to drill down and try to, to just to clarify the main point there, so when we look at this voting appears to be an increase, we will see obviously this time next week after the election, but as you see it, because we haven't got the breakdown, if it has increased, you think that may be down to primarily you know, white Caucasian women voting for them and either a softening of the image of the national rally or an appearance of a softening of the image of the national rally on women's rights. I think there is an appeasing effort. Uh, there has been for the past 10 years a first to look less ex less extreme, uh, less xenophobic, uh, less um, uh, unnerving. Um, this is why Jordan Bardella is so uh, popular amongst uh, uh, young people is, is because he is not um, uh, shouting in interviews, for example. There is this very calm uh, appearance that is in line with what the um, uh, national rally would like to um, uh, would like to perform, um, and this. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. No, it's a good point. I mean, I wanted to pick up as well because, you know, you're in Italy. Under a Maloney government right now, there was a lot of fear about the far right, which is now generally classed as hard right, really part of their grouping in, in the European um, Parliament, which is the Europeans of conservatives and reformists, seen as more nationalist than out and out far right, but it's debatable. And it's that the two can move back and forth. But do you do you compare the far right in France with what could happen in Italy under a Maloney government? Or do you think in terms of women's rights, it could be more extreme than that? Um, I believe it could be extreme depending on how influential the party could be in, um, in the National Assembly in France. Um, typically in Italy, and this is a phenomenon that we also can observe in France, is that uh, even though abortion is not explicitly illegal and criminalized, uh, there are uh, the um, liberty of conscience, there are um, medical deserts, that means that uh, in a lot of regions there isn't enough health care access. Um, there is, um, uh, so the liberty of, call, of conscience is that um, a doctor, a professional of health care can deny um, performing abortion because of its religion or because of uh, his values, um, resulting in a very difficult access to abortion uh, in most of the territory without be being, um, being criminalized. So this is what could happen in France as well, and this is what we have observed on a um, smaller scale. But that scale can heighten um, depending on the ballots in two and three weeks. Alice, good to talk to you. Alice Apostoli, co-founder and co-director of the Gender in Politics at Geopolitics Institute. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, as we were talking about a moment ago, it is a week until voters head to the polls here in France. There'll be a special programme, actually, live, minute by minute, minutes. We'll have reporters at all the polling stations, at all of the party HQs, analysts, politicians in the studio. Me and Nadia Massa will take you through as the results come in.